Taylor Swift's fans are so obsessed with her that she can't even go to a friend's rehearsal dinner without mobs of people gathering outside the restaurant to harass her. These are videos from August 18th, where we see fans engaging in behavior that is completely insane. Behavior that you would not see from any other fan base, even cult ones like Beyonce's or Nicki Minaj's fan base. I would feel bad for Taylor Swift, who is the target of this harassment, if this wasn't, in part, a result of her own actions. Instead of establishing boundaries with her fans to avoid fostering intense parasocial relationships between Swifties and herself, she cultivates them, kindling the delusional feelings of friendship that her fans have towards her in order to sell concert tickets, albums, and merch. This strategy is profitable, it's genius even, but is using PSYOP tactics on your teenage fans an ethical way to make money? Hi, I'm Robert Tolby, and let's talk about the strategic ways Taylor Swift engages with her fans. Before I start, I'd like to quickly monetize my parasocial relationship with my fans by reminding you that I do have a Patreon, and you can check it out and support me for as little as a dollar a month by clicking the link below. I also have a category with a Discord server where we can be parasocial besties. Anyways, I never really thought of how Taylor Swift interacted with her fans until I saw this TikTok video made by Francesca. Ramsey. But the reality is that Taylor's hardcore fans really do believe they are this close to being considered her friends. Taylor has stoked the flames of the parasocial relationship with her and her audience throughout the course of her career, and dare I say, it's evil genius. Remember when she was inviting fans to her home and baking them cookies and letting them listen to the album before anybody else? Just by doing that with a small group of fans, she planted the seed for millions that any day now they could be plucked out of obscurity and become Taylor Swift's friend. Coupled with the fact that Taylor is chronically online and known for engaging with her fans across social media, there is a specific type of fan that will go to extreme lengths to defend her behavior, especially to defend white womanhood, because there is a chance that Taylor will see those defenses and once again pluck them out of obscurity and make them her bestie. Her claims could not be more spot on. Taylor Swift's fans will literally take a bullet for her, and that's not by accident, that's by design. In the early days of social media, Researcher Alice Marwick described this parasocial phenomenon in her book, Status Update. When celebrities engage with only one or two fans every so often, other fans see that they have the potential to be retweeted or seen by their idol, making parasocial bonds between them and the person they're fixated on all the less hypothetical. This direct interaction between the fan and the celebrity sets parasocial relationships in the age of social media apart from the first parasocial relationships observed by researchers decades ago when television personalities were the object of people's obsessions. That chance that the parasocial relationship could potentially be reciprocated fuels these kinds of feelings, especially in younger fans who kind of have less of a grasp on reality. Taylor Swift has a long history of engaging with posts made by only her most loyal of fans. Swift has been an active Tumblr user. On the platform, the media organization Insider observed that she has liked hundreds of supportive posts made by fans. This rewards them for praising her every move and encourages other fans to post positive things about Taylor Swift in order to be seen by her. Shouting out fans and engaging with their posts online is one thing. Many celebrities engage in this kind of behavior. I don't think that celebrities should not engage with their fans at all on social media, but I do believe that there are boundaries, and whatever these boundaries may be, Taylor Swift has ignored all of them. Liking a post on Tumblr or Twitter is one thing, but inviting groups of fans over to your private residence to listen to albums ahead of their release is crazy. The power that this gesture holds over a fan base is unparalleled. No other celebrity with her level of fame and influence, at least to my knowledge, has done this. Interactions over the internet have limits in the ways they psychologically affect people. By inviting fans into her home, however, Taylor Swift removes all these barriers, making fans feel as if they're her close confidants. This is where the unreciprocated feelings that fans have that they are friends with Taylor Swift 
become reciprocated. And that is impactful not only for them, but it gives other fans a sense that they too could one day bake cookies with Taylor Swift at her house. In my opinion, that's highly inappropriate. The power dynamic does not allow for any connection that is healthy or genuine whatsoever between Taylor Swift and a fan. This is contrary to Swift's claims, of course. Taylor Swift has said that this bond that she has with her fans is important to lift her up at times where she has faced criticism and negativity. And that's cute and all, but Taylor, maybe that's a sign that you should get some real friends instead of inviting delusional strangers who think they're your friends to your house. Although I don't know much about Taylor Swift, it seems that surrounding herself with people who worship her has served her well. Her romantic relationships, professional relationships, and friendships with her actual peers have been rather tumultuous, and I imagine it's much easier to be friends with people who never criticize you and avoid conflict at all costs. With her millions of fans, if any one of them crosses her, they're easily expendable. Swift fosters these connections by sending gifts and handwritten letters to fans, memorizing personal details about their lives to congratulate them on their accomplishments, and by bringing these fans wildest dreams of being Taylor Swift's friend to life, she's playing with fire. While some fans may be able to grasp a reality despite having an intense parasocial relationship with Taylor Swift, others may be less equipped to handle her tactics. Though no one can fully escape the powers of a parasocial relationship, someone who is not of sound mind may actually believe that they are truly friends or in a romantic relationship with Taylor Swift. Just two months ago, an Indiana man was arrested on charges of stalking Taylor Swift, sending threatening messages and claiming that he was her soulmate. Every couple of years, some deranged stalker gets arrested for breaking into her house or harassing her. Of course, no one deserves to be stalked and harassed, and Taylor Swift is a victim here and is not responsible for the actions of crazy men. This does not, however, mean that her actions didn't potentially fuel insane behavior. It's not much of a stretch to say that throwing your doors wide open to a select group of fans may give other fans the idea that they're welcome in your home, an idea that you should never put in anyone's mind as a celebrity. Taylor Swift is taking a tremendous risk when she interacts with her fans in ways that I believe cross lines that should not be crossed. She's not stupid though. I think she knows the risks she's assuming here. I simply think that she believes the benefits of having a diehard fan base outweigh the risks of feeding into crazy stalkers parasocial delusions. Her fans are so blinded by their belief that Taylor Swift is somehow their friend that they feel they have the right to comment on her character and personal life. Often this commentary is not productive and shuts down proper discussion of her sometimes problematic actions. Because her fans are obnoxiously loud and defend whatever she does, Taylor Swift has managed to escape every single controversy that came her way, including this year's debacle where it was alleged that she associated herself romantically with someone who has a history of publicly saying and doing bigoted and distasteful things. The criticism, no matter how valid, is always drowned out by an army of Swifties who defend her every move. Because they seek Taylor Swift's validation in the form of likes on their posts, they will not stoop to criticizing her themselves lest they get shunned by their idol. With Swift being publicly mobbed by her fans left and right, it's easy to portray the situation as a woman simply wanting to live a private life, being accosted by people who are crazy. But their state of insanity has been fueled by her own actions. She is able to engage in these tactics to make her fans increasingly more loyal and attached to her brand, all while coming away looking as if she did nothing to provoke the craziness she has given rise to. Her methods of feeding into parasocial relationships are portrayed by the media, not as carefully planned strategies crafted by her and her team to drive sales and streams, but as wholesome bonding rituals between her faithful supporters and her. When fans are invited to her home, the media hails this as some kind of benevolent and selfless gesture, even though there are clear reasons why such an act benefits her directly. 
her down-to-earth, wholesome, and caring image pervades no matter how evident her tactics are. Though it's easy to cast her in the opposite way, as an evil genius, I don't believe that she hates her fans or is simply using them, but I think it's important to recognize that interacting with her fans is part of her job. It has become so integral to her work that despite being hunted by crazed fans, she continues to feed into the mania surrounding her and her music. Anyways, I'm Robert Tolpe, and I hope you enjoyed this short video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, maybe even check out my Patreon. And I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.